Hello, everybody. Welcome to Knowledge Drop number three, 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 three. Uh, my name is David, um, and I am here with Eddie from Darien, who's going to be talking about creativity, the importance of creativity in everybody's life, which is pretty exciting. Um, so just a reminder, this is the format. We'll have about 15 minutes of presentation, um, and then we'll have some time for questions. Um, and as always, these are, these are being recorded and will be shared uh, amongst all of you, along with the slides. Um, and just a plug for the Knowledge Drop channel on Slack, uh, which will have a bunch of information, follow-ups. If you want to follow up with Eddie there, uh, that'd be great too. So without further ado, I'll let Eddie take it away. Hey guys, um, I need to apologize. First and foremost, I'm sick from Carnival, uh, so I'm not, you're not gonna get the same enthusiasm uh, and uh, the same voice. And my voice is like super deep right now and I hate it. <laughs> um, also, if I have a fit of coughing, I apologize in advance. Um, all right, so I've given this talk uh, twice now, um, once to Darien in uh, Mexico City at our junction, and then a couple weeks ago to Meraki at uh, the first remote year uh, exchange. Um, I have a recording of it, so you can get like the actual full uh, enthusiastic version on YouTube. I'll send that. That'll be in the last slide, um, but I'll do this condensed version of it for you guys right now. Um, Okay, so I'm going to have to share my screen. All right. So, well, there's so many things happening on my screen right now. All right. Can you guys see this and hear me? Okay. All right. So <clears throat> this week's knowledge drop, uh, bi-weekly, weekly, I don't know. Um, this knowledge drop is uh, Never Stop Creating, um, the importance of creativity. Um, again, I'm Eddie. I'm 24. I'm an entrepreneur, a storyteller. I like to just sum it all up with storytelling because it's the easiest way. Um, I do a lot of things over a lot of different mediums. Um, I will, what's about to drop? Um, understanding creativity, I'm gonna break it down, what I think it is, uh, why I believe that you are creative, um, and then give you the recipe for success when it comes to creating or, or pursuing your own creative ideas. And uh, I wanna stress that it's never too late to create. Um, why I'm dropping this, I've been involved in, in creative things, uh, making, making things, uh, since I was, I don't know, 13, 14, uh, I started a clothing brand when I was like 13 years old and it kind of just snowballed into everything I've got going on now. I'm like, I'm an interface designer. I've got a web design development agency based out of Philadelphia. Uh, I've got a production company I actually started last month and then the nonprofit Valencia project, which you guys might've seen. Um, pushed throughout uh, Slack and on, on Facebook and, and the newsletters. Um, mainly why I'm dropping this is because I'm really, really excited to see you guys, remotes, creating things, um, creating new things, pursuing new ideas, and I'm super passionate about innovation. Okay, so what is creativity? Creativity is defined as turning abstract thought, imagination, or original ideas into reality. Um, we have been abstract thinkers since the days of the, uh, the Neanderthals. Uh, the Neanderthals were actually pretty creative. And I, I, this statement on the left here, I believe everyone's creative. Some of you might think it's a bold statement. Some of you might actually agree with that. Um, but I, I really do believe that everyone is creative or capable of being creative. Um, normally I would ask you guys here, like who confidently can say that they're creative uh, just to get an idea of, you know, who, who is and who, who doesn't feel like they are, um, but I can't see any of your faces, so I'm just gonna have to assume. Uh, but I think if you can ask questions, you can be creative, and that's a very important thing to remember. Um, and some examples over here of creativity, um, if you've ever had an argument with someone and then like later on, like in the shower or like laying down at night, you like replay that argument back and you win it over in your head, um, that's creative problem solving. That's that's creativity. Uh, shower thoughts are a powerful thing. Um, shooting a video on your cell phone, whether you realize it or not, that's composing a shot. That's, <coughs> that's creativity. Um, starting a movement, whether it's like a physical movement where you're dancing or a campaign that, uh, that you use to you know, make a difference or, or just get people involved, that's, those are both um, examples of creating. Motivating and inspiring someone. Um, if you motivate your friends or family, 
maybe it's with your travels, um, your that's creating inspiration, creating motivation, um, offering someone a job. If you have a company and you start a new position or you offer someone a job, that's creating opportunity, creating a job. Um, and then having a child, creating life. Um, I think that there's a lot of examples of creativity that, uh, that people might not actually realize are, are creative, uh, creative outlets. And that's because a lot of people have trouble separating art and artistic ability from creative ability. And they're very different. Um, so, so in this example, um, I, I like to use this example of J. Cole and uh, Lil Uzi Vert. I don't know if these are going to play with sound for you guys, but I'm going to try it. David, chime in if you can hear this or not. Turn the volume up all the way. What? Turn the volume up all the way. It's, you can hear, but it's very faint. It is. A, you're probably hearing it through my headphones then. So it's not going to play sound. All right. I don't know. I guess you, I don't know how I'm going to play these. You these can you get your headphones out. It might work. Like okay. The computer. Okay. Crying in the corner, consigned in the sorta, kinda dissing niggas on border, line addicted to slaughter, line of niggas in order of who you think can really fuck with me most. Then I tuck the heat close. If he don't duck, then he goes. Ain't no need for discussion. It's okay, so that's J. Cole. J. Cole's a pretty popular rapper, uh, pretty uh, impressive career. Um, I think that video has like 13, <coughs> 13 million views. And then there's this bad and bougie video. And I'm gonna play the verse from Lil Uzi Vert. This is also a very successful, very popular rapper. Um, and just gonna show you the contrast between these guys. I don't know where it's first time. Oh, this is the wrong video. Shit. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to not put you through any more of that. The point is that while you might agree or disagree with these guys and their artistic ability, like maybe you think J. Cole is, you know, very skilled, very talented artistically, and uh, Lil Uzi Vert might not come off that way. Both of these guys are creators. And that's a very important point to remember that art is subjective. Um, and some people might agree that, you know, you're artistic, but it might not. The point is that you can still be a creator, whether or not you're artistic. And there's a couple examples. What? Okay, so I'll get back to the artistic ability, creative, the creativity thing. Um, Innovation is dire in this, in the realm of creativity has pushed us, uh, has kept us pushing the boundaries. Uh, pursuing new ideas has, has, has kept us innovating and it's our responsibility to push the boundaries and to continue to innovate because we are capable of abstract thought. Um, and some of our most famous innovators were not artistic. They just asked the right questions. So it comes back to being able to ask questions. Um, so Ford didn't invent the automobile. He just asked, how can I make this more accessible? Jobs didn't invent a smartphone. He just asked, how can I make this simple and beautiful? And Hastings didn't invent movie rentals. He just asked, what company can I murder today? And if you guys want to see what that link is later, you can go find the slides and click on it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to click on it right now, <laughs> but they just asked questions and made, made the right decisions. Um, used creative problem solving to get us to where we are. Like th these three things like Netflix, uh, the iPhone and the automobile are, are major parts of our lives. And um, none of those, none of the people that were behind those innovations were really that artistic. Uh, okay, so there's a recipe for success. Um, when you want to pursue a new uh, creative idea, um, the first two kind of go hand in hand. Passion, uh, it's, it's easy <coughs> 
to find the means to create things when you're passionate about an idea and confidence, confidence kind of comes with passion. If you're passionate about an idea, it's easy to find the confidence to pursue it. It's easy to find the confidence to sell it. Um, uh, fake it till you make it is a term that's thrown around a lot. And I, I've used it before because I have a, my web design development agency in Philadelphia. We started when we were like 17, 18 years old and we were walking door to door just selling websites. Uh, and, and then eventually someone asked us, like, do, you do, do you guys do e-commerce? And we were like, fuck yeah, we do e-commerce. Uh, we'd never done an e-commerce site in our lives. And then a few months later, it was like, oh, you do, you do uh, mobile apps. And we were like, of course we do mobile apps. We'd never done a mobile app in our lives. Um, so we were so enthusiastic and so passionate about growing our business and, and making a difference in the small business world in South Jersey that we found it easy to just fake it and learn as we went. <coughs> So those are, that's an example of how passion and confidence can kind of work for you. The important thing that a lot of people struggle with is the perseverance ingredient. Um, and this quote from Teddy Roosevelt, nothing in the world is worth having or worth doing unless it means pain or effort, pain or difficulty. Um, and that's, that's true. I think if you want, if something is worth it to you to pursue, um, it's going to be hard. It's definitely going to be hard at first. Um, perseverance, uh, is is a is the vital ingredient here and i wanted to show i have to take this out here so my friend aaron who i use as an example in in growth uh aaron started out making these really really weird videos back in the myspace days um and he would spend hours and hours on these videos and he would post them on his myspace blog and people were like what is this why are you doing this it's so weird uh and here's one of them i'm just gonna play it real fast Book. <laughs> okay, um, that's enough of that. Um, the point is, Aaron Aaron worked a lot. He spent a lot of time on these videos, uh, and a lot of people hated on him for it. Hated on the videos. They would talk shit to his face, uh, and I remember seeing them being like, uh, "That's really weird." But I was also doing like my own creative things at the time that you know, weren't really that uh, impressive or uh, well-rounded. <laughs> um, oh my God, sorry about that. Um, so, but Aaron didn't care. The, the, the thing that impressed me the most and the thing I admired most about Aaron was he really didn't give a shit. He just kept doing it and kept doing it. And uh, Aaron's been actually working in the industry, the film industry for the last six or seven years. He moved to Chicago. He left our little town in South Jersey and he got a job. He, he's been, he last week, uh, well, I guess a week and a half ago, he was on set of a McDonald's commercial. And, and I, th I think it was because of his, uh, his ability to take criticism or take criticism with a, with a grain of salt. And I'll show you an example of some of his more recent work. I think this is a music video that he, I'm really proud of Aaron. I'm really proud of uh, the work he put in and the progress he made. And he pushed through all that, like all the hate and, and he grew a lot. And funny thing, we actually started a, the production company I mentioned earlier, we started together last month and he's in the process of leaving the company he's working for now and working on his own production company with me, which is really exciting. And uh, just a great example of what you can do if you keep trying, keep, keep pushing um, when you are passionate about something. So there, I'm going to leave you with the, 
the do's and don'ts. Um, the do's, the major keys, uh, number one, question everything. And I mean question everything except your abilities. Uh, always be asking, you know, what can change? What can be better? What do I want to do? What will make me happy? What will make things around me improve? But never question your ability to make those things happen because it's really important that you believe in yourself when it comes to pursuing creative ideas. Um, there's, a, there's a thing. I, if I were to give you guys this, this knowledge drop in, in Spanish, you probably wouldn't understand a single word of it because I haven't been practicing my Spanish as much as I should be. Um, and that the same thing applies to your creative ideas. At first, you're going to have a really hard time communicating your ideas efficiently and people aren't really going to get them. And then the more you do it and the more you practice, the easier it will get, the more people will understand you. So it's important to keep, keep practicing your, keep exercising your creative ability. Um, persevere. Remember that you will get better. These kind of go hand in hand. Um, you, you're going to suck at first. You're going to suck if it's something you've never done before. It's, it's going to be hard, and it's, but it's going to be worth it. And it's going to be really, really fulfilling once things start to happen to fall into place and, and ideas come into reality. Uh, and then also keep innovating and pursuing your ideas. If you've got an idea, uh, even if it's like a marginal improvement to something new or to something existing, or if it's a, a crazy new idea that you think is going to make a huge difference, it's your obligation as an abstract thinking being to pursue it. Uh, don't miss, why, why am I seeing my own face? I don't like this. <laughs> don't, uh, don't be afraid. No one's going to remember the ideas that you don't pursue. Uh, if you're too afraid to pursue them because you're afraid of what people are going to think or you're afraid you're going to fail, that's, you're already failing and you haven't, you haven't even started. Don't get discouraged. Be like Aaron, take criticism and feedback with a grain of salt. Um, it's important to understand that a lot of the criticism you get is going to be constructive and a lot of it is not. Uh, and it's, it's good to, to differentiate those and also to stay focused on, on your goals and, and believe in your, 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 end, your end goal. And don't wait. It is, it's never too late to create something. And if you're in a position right now, I've seen it, I've seen it in my group. I've seen it in Meraki. Uh, there's people that, <coughs> excuse me join remote ear and they're doing something, you know, just as like their, their day job or whatever it is. And they, they join their group and they see there's people in the group that are doing things that they love and, and really passionate about what they're doing. And they realize they're not doing the same thing or they want to be doing the same thing and they quit their jobs. And I, I respect those people for doing that because it's really hard to take that leap. But I think it's really important that they did it. Um, and if you're, our life expectancy is now or like, 80, sometimes 90 years, uh, if you're 45, 50 years old, you have an entire lifetime ahead of you to pursue something that you're passionate about, to pursue something that means, means more to you. And it's, it's not too late to start asking those questions and, and thinking about what you're going to be wanting to pursue for the, the rest of your life or what's going to make you feel more fulfilled. Um, that's, I think, I believe that's it. Yeah. Okay. So homework, uh, I want to leave you with, uh, do something, do anything. Um, specifically for this knowledge drop, I want you guys to block off 30 minutes of your calendar this week to answer these three questions. Did I feel creative before the knowledge drop? Do I feel like I can be creative now? And what is one thing I'd like to create and share? So that last question, think about one thing that you want to create, one thing that maybe you've been thinking about for a while or, or a new idea and drop it in the knowledge drop channel, tag me in it. I want to see it. I want to see all of them. Um, and I want to talk to you guys about them because I'm really interested in your ideas and, and helping collaborating, whatever it may be. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd answer them right now. Also, I want you guys to, I apologize for this, uh, lackluster talk that I just delivered. Um, there's a much better version of this at this link here. Uh, I'll post it in the channel so you guys can watch it. If you want, if you had enough of this, I totally understand. Um, but I'd love to answer any questions or, uh, or talk, talk to you guys, uh, about any things that you're, you're thinking. And if there's any questions, feel free to throw them in the Q and a down, uh, down at the bottom of the screen. If not, it's cool. There usually aren't that many questions surrounding this.
I actually have a question. So if everyone, uh, we talked about that a little bit about this before, but like if everyone has like these really busy lives doing their own thing, they're like in a supposedly uncreative, uncreative pursuit. How, how, what are the best tactics for people to actually set aside time to do this kind of thing? Well, like something that, like a new idea? Or something that they say, say someone has a creative, something they want to pursue creatively, but like they just don't, can't find the time. How do they, how do they make it happen? Honestly, like that's, that's kind of a, an excuse, right? If you, if you wanted to, if you really wanted to, you would prioritize it. Um, it's the same thing with like, I want to go to the gym. I want to get in shape or I want to eat healthier. Like you're not doing it because you're just, it's not a priority to you. Um, and if you really, really wanted to pursue something new and creative, you would, you would block out some time on your calendar or you would just, it would just happen naturally. I mean, I, you can't, you can definitely force yourself to start, to start building those habits, but, um, they're going to be really, really painful if you're not passionate and enthusiastic about it. All right. Well, I don't think there's any questions, so I think uh, you should probably just call it there. You're probably psyched to like get <coughs> a little bit. But um, thank you guys so much for joining us. This was awesome. Super, super interesting. Um, we'll be posting the video on the slides within the next few days um, in the Knowledge Drop channel. I encourage everyone to go join it. Um, and I'll see you all again in two weeks where we're going to have a presentation on, uh, kind of related to this on video production. So it'll be pretty exciting, uh, by Gianna, uh, from Magellan. Um, I will, and I will see you guys all there. Thank you. Thanks y'all.